Now, Africa is fast building a profile as the world's next frontier of opportunity. In the process, the continent has to put forward an equally positive identity for itself. Joining us now to discuss identity and opportunity in Africa is Teresa Clark. She's the chairperson and CEO of Africa.com. Teresa, thank you so much and welcome to Beyond Markets. Um, of course, you've done a lot of promotional work um, getting the image um, of the continent uh, recalibrated in many ways because there is still quite a lot of stereotypical views on how people view Africa. Why did you become involved in this work and why do you regard it as important um, for um, companies to have a different way of looking at Africa? One would have assumed that in this kind of age of technology people would have access to you know the real story here. Well having access and actually using that access are two different things and so I think in particular the US market really lacks an understanding of what Africa is about. I think we see historically Europe, we certainly know China, understand the opportunities in Africa very well but in particular the US market has never really engaged with Africa mm -hmm. as an investment destination. We think of Africa and the US as a place for charitable contributions, a place for pity and there just can't be enough work done mm -hmm. in order to help the Americans understand Africa in its fullness. Mm -hmm. Now Teresa of course you've made a short film about debunking those myths and stereotypes. Let's have a look. But I just wanna feel good every day. And the problem with stereotypes is not that they are untrue but that they are incomplete. You're going to Africa. What? There's, there's a perception that, that Africa doesn't, you know, that we don't have planes, trains, automobiles. I felt like they question our intelligence. Um, they, they wonder if we were as educated or we can speak English properly or we have resources or if we have cars and technology and roads and proper houses. You find a lot of ignorance. There is a whole other side to Africa that people don't know about. Ha, let's go. We are getting investments of about a billion dollars a year in telecoms. And nobody knows, except a few smart people. We're looking at, at a, a very human level, impacting individual lives. But we're also looking at impacting a whole society by fundamentally rewriting how leaders are educated in Africa. I don't have to travel to take money to my parents. I can just send it from here. And within seconds, the cash is in their phones. Africa, from east to west, north to south, business, technology, education, and government. Of course, there is a very um, evocative video there, a rather film there, um, showing Africans explaining technology, explaining advancement. Um, and of course, we're still struggling to get a counter narrative to the one that you described earlier as a place of pity, as a place uh, where people need to be helped out. Um, what are the common uh, myths about the continent that you often encounter when you speak to business people about Africa as an investment destination? Well, I had an opportunity to be the keynote speaker at the White House Conference on Investment in Africa just two weeks ago. And that was a wonderful place to see how people are thinking about Africa in the United States. Um, that group may have been a little bit more sophisticated than the average, but that group in general spoke about the challenges that they face in raising investment dollars. And it's really not a lot different from what I've said already. People in the United States simply have no idea. They think of Africa, if it's not about pity, then it's a place to go on holiday. Mm -hmm. It's about safari, it's about animals. And so being able to understand that there are risks here, but at the same time there are rewards. Being able to understand, I think some people have this idea, of course, that Africa is a country. Yes. And then if they don't think of it as one country, then they think of it as 54 countries, and that's too daunting. Mm -hmm. And so we help them to think about the fact that you don't really have to think of it as 54 countries either. There's a regional notion. Mm -hmm. And so if you think of West Africa as a region, East Africa, Southern Africa, that helps to make it a little bit more digestible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think appreciating the legal structures, the fact that there is governance, that it's not just one big banana republic and that when wrongs occur, there are structures to address those wrongs. I mm -hmm. think that these are some of the common myths that investors have. Mm -hmm. um, and I think usually once they actually take a trip 
and get here and see, then it all becomes clear. But it is about getting over that first hurdle. Mm -hmm. Now, I spoke um, previously with the Undersecretary uh, for Africa uh, from the US who was here in South Africa with uh, quite a large delegation. Um, and of course, South Africa does have the AGOA Treaty with the US uh, where we have some kind of preferential trade arrangements. A lot of manufactured products from South Africa goes to the US. What kind of markets are people looking, US firms looking to access uh, on the continent? Um, I mean, we are known for our resources, obviously, our oil. There's a lot of um, interest in energy and gas findings. Take us through some of the kind of markets that people are exploring. Um, and I'm now talking about beyond the kind of big players, your you know, more smaller uh, uh, companies, people that are looking to diversify their markets. I think the big change today is looking at Africa from a consumer market perspective. To the extent that Americans have been involved in investing in Africa in the past, it has been the large companies mm -hmm. that you said accessing the oil and the resources that are on the ground. But now I think that people are understanding that Africa in and of, in and of itself is a market and that the investment opportunities like what Walmart did in mm -hmm. making its acquisition of MassMart in South Africa, seeing how people can play on the fact that Africans are going from rural communities to urban communities, setting up new households, and all of the economic activity that comes about as a result of that activity. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, um, no investment destination is without its challenges, and uh, some countries on the continent have better infrastructure, have better uh, legislative processes that guarantee security of tenure in terms of investments yes. than others. Um, if one were to make the continent more digestible, as you say how do you explain to investors that um, you know they are uneven patterns of development um, and how does that impact on um, the way in which investors look at the continent as an opportunity or as an emerging market? I think there are a number of different resources that evaluate each of the 54 countries in terms of their transparency, the degree to which there are democratic systems. One of the ones that we like the best, of course, is the Ibrahim Index founded by Mo Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. I think what we like about that one is the fact that it's by Africans, for Africans in many regards. So it's not necessarily just an outsider's view of Africa, but really developed by people who understand the continent and the challenges. And that looks at pr issues as, um, as diverse as security. Mm -hmm. um, freedom of the press, um, access to health care, access to education, the degree to which um, democratic processes exist for elections, etc. And so the Ibrahim Index happens to be our favorite. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned earlier when we uh, just started the conversation that Americans somehow has to catch up, um, that other countries, including Europe and of course emerging countries such as uh, em emerging economies such as China, India, and Brazil, have kind of come full force. You know, you feel and see their presence. And of course, South Africa being part of BRICS, that summit happening uh, in, in March. Um, uh, really refocusing Africa's um, you know outlook eastward um, and there is a sense that America shouldn't kind of drop the ball um, is there enough appreciation within um, the states that um, if people aren't going to come to the continent that others will in, ta in fact not wait and take advantage and that it's important to, to you know to get off the mark and get in here now that's certainly our message. Um, the message that we gave at the White House was certainly that Africa's not waiting for the U.S., that there are plenty of other takers if America doesn't step mm -hmm. up to the plate.